so crouchy. People are used to the idea of Paul Scholes, unbelievably talented footballer, who apparently couldn't tackle. So 97 yellow cards, four red cards in the Premier League. And of course, he missed that Champions League final in 1999 through suspension. Now, I've heard different theories about this. One theory is unbelievably gifted, unfortunately couldn't mm. tackle. Theory number two, unbelievably gifted, dirty tackler. <laughs> I actually spoke to Paul Scholes recently. So, I mean, listen, he's not a bad tackler. He's not got 97 yellow cards and four red in the Premier League by missed time in tackles, has he? He's getting people back. He's, you know, he's yeah. tough. He's hard. You know, he, he said to me, like, from, you know, where he's from, you know, you had to hold your own, basically. And that's what, something he's grew up on. It just so happened that he was one of the most naturally gifted footballers that England have ever produced. He said, I'd always, if someone put one in on me, I'd, I'd always store it and I'd always get them back. I wouldn't buy into the fact that... Um, Paul Scholes is a bad tackler. I'd buy into the fact that Paul Scholes holds his own and, and I'm sure he's taken his fair share as well because he was he was so gifted. And I remember playing against Paul Scholes a few times and uh, when you're playing at Old Trafford, you, they're so good. You have, the forwards have to drop in on the on the deep lying midfielder. And when he got a bit older, he sort of became that that deep lying player. He wasn't, you know, the forward or the goal scorer that he once was. He became this sort of this genius in that sort of quarterback position I just couldn't get anywhere near him as soon as you got close to him he'd one touch it like he'd, he'd play one two around you or he'd get you know a couple of triangles all around you make you look stupid as soon as you stood off him he'd be picking passes 60 70 yards onto people's toes the other thing Chris as well for Skulls so it's almost like he's doing his dirty tackling double stealth because not only does everyone think beautiful skillful tackler but he's playing in a United midfield alongside Roy Keane yeah. So it's like it's the greatest disguise. He's got double disguise skulls. Oh, I'm a playmaker. Oh, I'm not. This. I'm Roy Keane's the one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the art of distraction, isn't it? Just thinking. Then who's on his list still to go? Do we <laughs> who, do we, who do we reckon? I reckon there's a few Arsenal players. Key on list. <laughs> Key owns on it. There's <laughs> definitely a few Arsenal players. On it's that like list. an alternative Santa. This dude. <laughs> yeah, isn't I, he? I reckon there's a few City players. There must be a few Liverpool players on there. Do you think he crosses? He's got a little black book and he puts a little cross next to it. And each year he. Thinks thinks okay this year I've got to get Keown yeah. I've got to get bold he's looking at the lineup for soccer aid every year <laughs> <laughs> that's true one year you've got to be suspicious if Paul Skulls does soccer <laughs> yeah. aid all of a sudden Paul Skulls is bang up for soccer aid <laughs> having a snap next to Usain Bolt and Jonathan uh, Wilkes hold on a minute Who's, who else is involved in yeah. it? <laughs> do you think you were ever on Skulls' naughty list um I mean, I tried to get round him and unsettle him, and I might have stood on his toes a few times, but I don't think I ever. Did you apologise? Um, I mean, he might, he might have <laughs> smashed me a couple of times. The thing about skulls for me, Chris, every time I hear him speak, I'm always surprised by how deep his voice is. Whereas Jamie Carragher has got a much higher voice than you'd expect from a man of. It's almost like they've swapped voices. <laughs> right. Okay. Are you saying he's putting it on? I would not from what we just heard I'm not going to accuse Paul Skulls of anything do you know one of the one of the best things that because uh, I interviewed him for, for a show this was the most Paul Skulls answer of all time I just said uh, so can you describe yourself in three words and he said no that's <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> All right, that's perfect, that. I said, that's, uh, that's just what I wanted him to say, really. Do you know what? I'm slightly worried that you're on, you're on his... <laughs> no. You're on his list. That's enough. You're on yeah, his list. I, I think you're on the list, mate. That's you're, what the no says. List, the no it? says, I'm no, getting you. No, because the interview was great and he was amazing. He opened up about his career. I'm talking you know, talk about some of his goals. And, you know, when you go through some of the goals he scored, I mean, wow. Ridiculous. Incredible, you know. And, uh, just a shame, really, that... I think in, in another country, I think we would have built a team around Paul Scholes. We always find it difficult to... to to fit in some of our best players, you know. Zidane says he was the best player of his generation. Yeah, I just think it's difficult. You know, like Matt Letizia, for instance, I always think like Peter Beardsley, you know, players of that calibre. All three of those ones you've mentioned are also unusual looking men. Yeah. <laughs> all geniuses, though. All geniuses. Very much geniuses. I, I love all three of those as players. So last night I trawled through videos of uh, your tackles. Yeah. The worst tackle I ever did was on Obi Mikel. Uh, I, I wanted oh, to you've talk got to you about this. I've, I've got this. <laughs> so Should not. we watch it together? So all you got to do is go on YouTube and type in Peter Crouch, crazy tackle. Uh, That's simple. what it's called. Oh! 
So John Amy Michele is ushering the ball over the left touch line yeah. and you have gone not just two footed. There's no way you're touching the ball there. You've gone through both his legs. Yeah, no, no, I've just completely lost the plot. I mean, we talk about red miss. I mean, I've literally, I've lost it there. And um, I'll tell you why. He's been basically told to sort of mark in front of me. So I had a centre half behind me and him, him and like here. And he's basically standing all over my toes and uh, like constantly all going. I'm trying to chest things away and he's putting his head in my face and his elbows in my, in, all around me, all going. And I've been telling the ref and I'm, I'm getting nothing. So we're about 70 minutes in here now and it's been going on all game and uh, it's happened again. The ball's broke there just perfectly and he's sort of facing the the stand and obviously I've just switched lost the plot and tried to take him out <laughs> basically <laughs> and uh but yeah not, not not proud of it I didn't catch him thankfully but because the red mist was that because it was it was like an out-of-body experience and then afterwards I got back and I thought um oh, I'll have a look at that tackle yeah I look at it I went oh no <laughs> <laughs> that's oh that's in fact three red cards like what on earth was I thinking but it's, it's it's just something that I can't explain. I, he'd been winding me up the entire game and that, I just completely lost it. You know, if he's listening to this, which I in no way think he will be, <laughs> uh, John Overkill, I'd like to apologise. Hang on, so it was never resolved? It was never spoken no, I mean, about? He was always, was... He was all right. These things happen in games, don't they? I mean, that was one that I, I deeply regret. What's the worst tackle a friend of yours has done on you? Ooh. Yeah, Martin Skirtle. Uh, I was playing for uh, Liverpool we, I played with him. So he's playing for Slovakia and I'm playing for England and he's my teammate. He used to jump off my thigh. He'd use you as a crouchy So he's literally like put his studs on your thigh and jump off and get more leverage, win the header. And I'm, I'm not joking. When I came off the, after the game, my stud marks all over my thighs, like the whole way up, um, all over my side, over, some of my back. He's jumped off my back. But he must he's have been dragging you down then. So he's dragging time. me down and getting more leverage himself. So he's winning the headers and he's like... And also taking out a player who's good in the air out, out of the game. game. I said to, every time I said to him, I said, no, I knew him. I played with, <laughs> with Liverpool with him still. And uh, I said, like, any, like, any chance? Like, and he said, oh, Crouchy, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, Crouchy, sorry. And then he just do it again. <laughs> 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 for the for entire him. game yeah. Yeah, look, that's the thing you know what I don't care I don't hate Martin Skirtle for that I just go he's, he's got an edge and he's used it and uh, fair play if Martin Skirtle who is a, an athlete and a central defender so from a standing position he could probably jump to where his head was like six foot four off the ground if he's launching off your thighs <laughs> yeah, yeah. is the ref not thinking bloody hell look where Martin Skirtle's got to he's good in the air yeah <laughs> he's at eight feet in the air yeah amazing skill because also as a striker surely one of the most satisfying things is watching a defender come in for the tackle mm. from distance you know they're going to clobber you and you just pull the ball back ever so slightly and watch them sort of slide in front the best I ever saw at it was Wes Brown he'd let the sort of winger get to the ball but he knew he'd slowed it down to the point where he knew that he would get the, on the moment he touched the ball he would be smashed <laughs> into the stand basically and uh, he was brilliant at it. Honestly, it was a skill. He could have, you know, got to the ball first and maybe shielded it off, but he delayed his run to the point where he just knew that he was going to get man and ball. So it's no foul. Um, it's just a, a very aggressive tackle. It's a, it's a genuine skill that I never saw sort of replicated uh, to, to, to that level again, really. Just before you arrived, I was upstairs in this pub um, having a macaroni cheese or a mac and cheese and I saw a mouse run along the floor. Really? Yeah, an actual, <laughs> actual mouse. Seriously? Yeah. From the kitchen or? Well, I don't like to think. Oh, that's could okay. have been worse. Yeah. Like a rat. Could have been a rat, yeah. yeah. Well, the way the mouse came out, do you remember that um, that clip on the BBC News where the bloke's trying to do something for his house and his kids come in and then his mm. wife comes in oh. and his wife comes in and then runs out backwards the mouse basically did that like he ran out and then he sort of looked at me eating my macaroni cheese realised it was bad news and wham he was so straight out well. he knew he'd done something wrong yeah. mm. I, think, I think that sort of sums up the the pubs we do this in really isn't it yeah <laughs> absolutely and that's no that's not even offensive to this particular pub I love it's just it. as it is I like why we pub. love it um, Crouchy have you ever had a pest problem that you've had to deal with at your house uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a mouse 
got in our bedroom and uh, in the middle of the night I heard scurrying mm. looked over saw the mouse on the on the side and obviously it was all hell broke loose the lights came on it went up into the curtain and uh I was, it was, you could see it, you know, but you could, I couldn't get it. And I didn't want to touch it with my bare hands. So I went downstairs, I put rubber gloves on and attacked it. So I had no, it. I had no clothes on with rubber gloves, bouncing around trying to get the, uh, <laughs> so he went in the inside of the curtain bit. So it, he it was went through the lining. Through the lining. And then that's why it, was, it took a while to get. How did know. you get him out? Well, we just sort of fingered him down. Like, <laughs> like, you fingered a no, mouse wearing rubber gloves. <laughs> <laughs> fingered the mouse down. What's that mean? No, you know, like, so I've, I've gone into the lining through the outside of the lining and just... Uh, moved your finger like a giant just, sweeper. Just pushed him down, yeah. Did you catch it? Yeah, I got it in the end, yeah. Got it outside and... Uh, with the um, with the mouse, did you talk to the mouse as you were doing it to sort of gently encourage it down? There's a lot of expletives. <laughs> uh, um, and this is lot. you and Ab- I'm assuming Abby's the other person that was helping you yes, with this. Yes, yes, yes. Was she involved? Is she standing on the bed? She, yeah, it's just on the bed. She didn't want to touch it or be near it. But um, <laughs> me being gloves. the man that I am. <laughs> and then being so nice as to just release it. Oh, yeah, no. Well. He needs to go. And then you just hope and pray that he he's, needs to he's go. acting solo. <laughs> was, that the, was that the last words you said to him as you released him back into the world? like with Born Free and the Lions you need to go my little friend go enjoy yourself go and enjoy yourself and watch a fox devour him on his way out (laughs) (laughs) hi it's Peter Crouch from that Peter Crouch podcast if you like what you hear click the link in the description click the link in the description what does that mean